Hello and welcome to you my dear viewers. Thank you for tuning in and today Monday and subsequent Mondays we will be covering the subject of following Jesus. That is discipleship and we are going to emphasize that following Jesus or discipleship is the pathway of obedience. You cannot follow Jesus without obeying him. And you cannot obey Jesus if you truly don't know him. The challenge for us today is, do you really know the Jesus of the Bible? Or you just know the Jesus that somebody has been teaching to you? In my teaching, I challenge everyone to go beyond what I'm saying and go to scriptures so that you can know the truth from there and then verify that the things I'm saying about Jesus and about the Bible are true. For this teaching, um, we have a book. I wrote this book in 2007 and it's been published here in Cameroon and um, you can follow the number that uh, you see below the screen there to check out how you can purchase a copy. It is just uh, a series of lessons on how you can truly follow Jesus. One thing you need to understand is that Jesus did not even commission people to go into the world and make Christians. No, he said go into all the world and make disciples. As we will continue in this study, we will cover who is a disciple. A disciple is a follower. A disciple of Jesus is a follower of Jesus. And I want to like by giving these warnings from Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul charges Timothy to preach the word in season and out of season in view of the coming day of the Lord because he will judge both the living and the dead and then he says that a time is going to come and that time is now when men will not endure sound doctrine but they will heap unto themselves men who will tell them what their tickling ears want to hear most people today follow teachings not because they are true but because they are teaching what they want to hear most people want to hear something about signs and wonders most people want to hear something about miracles it's not that jesus doesn't do miracles but is that really what jesus wants of you at this time i want to remind you this when Jesus was on earth, he performed a lot of miracles. We can perform a lot of miracles as well. And because of those miracles, people were flogging after him. Not because they wanted to believe in him, but because they wanted to see the miracles or benefit from the miracles. And today, it is not, it's not different. People want to benefit from miracles, to benefit from signs and wonders. I'm not saying that you cannot receive a healing, a miracle. I pray actually that if you are sick, that Jesus will heal you. But I want you to understand that the greatest healing from Jesus is to save your soul from perishing in hell. So I call on you, if you don't know Jesus, to repent and believe in him. You can't follow Jesus if you do not believe in him. Talking about the times and many kinds of teachings, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5, he would say to the Corinthians people that when I came to you, I didn't come to you with eloquency of speech. I didn't try to impress you to see that I can speak well, although he could, so that your faith will not rest upon his articulation, his eloquence. But he came to you in the power of the Spirit 
so your faith will rest in the power of God that is my prayer for you as you are listening to me even this year I'm crying unto God that this year 2024 will be the year of divine visitation and I pray for you that the Holy Spirit will visit you in a unique way this year and that the Spirit will manifest in your life in a unique way this year. You can only be the hindrance for the manifestation of the Spirit in your life. That is, if you decide to stay in your sins, the Holy Spirit won't manifest in your life. If you refuse to repent, the Holy Spirit will not manifest in your life. And I believe strongly that God has heard my prayer. And that as you listen to this message and make the resolution that, yes, I will truly follow Jesus, His Spirit will manifest in your life. And as we embark on this series of following Jesus, I want to tell you right up front that following Jesus is very dangerous. You can be killed for following Jesus. You can lose your life for following Jesus. You can lose your material possessions for following Jesus. You can lose your house for following Jesus. You can lose a lot of things for following Jesus. But Jesus is better than everything in this life, even better than life itself. Because he gives life and he gives eternal life. In fact, he died to secure that eternal life for you. So I pray that you can overcome the fear of death and embark on following Jesus, following the truth. In Matthew chapter 10, when he was commissioning the disciples to go out, he made the statement that I did not come to bring peace on the earth. I came to bring division. I came to divide families. What, 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 what? Jesus to divide? Yes, because if a husband believes this message and the wife does not believe, there will be a division. If the mother believes this message and the son doesn't believe, there will be a division. If a son-in-law believes the message and the mother-in-law does not believe, there will be a division. And then Jesus goes down to verses 37 Matthew 10 37 to 39 he says this anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me listen carefully if you love anything else in this life more than Jesus whether it's your father, whether it's your mother, whether it's your wife, whether it's your son, whether it's your daughter, if you love them more than you love Jesus, Jesus said, you are not worthy to follow me. You are not worthy to be my disciples. And then he goes ahead. And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. <laughs> not only are you not to love those people relationships more than Jesus you cannot even love yourself more than Jesus so in whatever situation you have to ask the question where is Jesus in this situation Jesus has to come first place in your life first place in every other relation that is how much he expects of anyone who follows him so following Jesus could cost you a lot but the gain far outweighs everything you can ever imagine here's those verses where I say whoever finds his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it okay if you think that you are going to protect yourself and everything else well at the end you have nothing but if you lose everything for the sake of Jesus, then you gain life and you gain eternal life. So we're going to go over here to Hebrews 11. 
I said here, this booklet is Following Jesus, and the subtitle is Writing Your Name in the Hall of Faith. Writing Your Name in the Hall of Faith. We're going to see examples of people in the Bible who followed God, who followed Jesus, and they were winners because they followed Jesus. And we're also going to see the types of difficulties that they went through because they trusted in Jesus. And here in Hebrews 11, we are given a great list of them. We're shown people of faith. Now, I mentioned at the beginning about today people who want to see miracles, who want to hear the signs and wonders before they can actually come out. As a result, most prophets, teachers, or whoever, they have to make their signs and say, signs and miracles, this and this. The amount of miracles that are announced, if they were happening, nobody would be sick anywhere else. Everybody would have already been healed and delivered. But the challenge is, as Jesus said, is that, he said, a wicked and adulterous generation asks for signs. The reason we're running after signs is because we have no faith. And Jesus said that, blessed are those who have not seen but have believed than those who want to see before they believe. You want to see a miracle before you believe. Hebrews 11, the hall of faith. Would you be one of these people? Will it ever be written about you as it is written about these people in this passage of scripture? These are people, I will say it again, who followed God. Some of them followed God to their death. And you know that Jesus followed the Father to his death. That's why he said here in Matthew 10 that anyone who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Faith in Jesus brings many, many, many spiritual blessings. But it also brings suffering. We're also going to see, so, but why do we have to suffer? Why does suffering come with following Jesus? In a nutshell, it comes because we live in the devil's world. And the devil does not want truth. So when you believe Jesus, you now have believed the truth. You now stand for the truth. And then you see the manifestation of the devil. And the devil manifests in this world through wicked people, through those who hate truth. Hebrews 11, beginning from verse 1. I will try to read all of the chapter all the way to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4, so that you get the whole context and see whether or not you can embark on this journey to follow Jesus. Jesus would say that who among you who wants to build a house does not calculate how much they have to start from foundation to roof and just start building. Because if you just start building, you may reach at a certain point and say, oh, I don't have enough to finish a building. And then people will look at you and laugh. So when you want to follow Jesus, count the cost. Count the cost. And we are going to examine this in this series of following Jesus discipleship the pathway of obedience now I'm actually going to read Hebrews 11 now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see being sure of what we hope for and be certain of what we do not see that is faith is totally contrary or opposite to those who want to see things before they believe. This is what the ancients were commended for. 
This is what the ancients, the, the, God clapped his hands for these people because of faith. They acted in hope without sin. Verse 3. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed of God's command. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was what commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, he still speaks even though he is dead. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. Now listen carefully as I'm reading. The word commended has appeared already three times here, I think, yes commended verse 4 and then commended again about Enoch to commend means to praise to say yes you have done a good job so these people were commended for their faith and then verse 6 says it categorically that without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Have you ever seen God? Do you believe that God exists? Has he proven himself to you without you seeing anything? I have, he has proven himself to me again and again and again and again yet by faith i don't see that's why he's saying here that if you cannot believe in what you do not see you you are not fit you cannot please god at all but if you seek him earnestly diligently he is going to reward you and you are going to see this reward so by faith, Noah, when he was warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. In the same vein, we are warned today that the judgment of God is at the door. Will you believe and escape or in faith or you are going to continue to live in your sin? Verse 8, by, by, by faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger, as a, for, as a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise for he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God this is faith by faith Abraham even though he was past age and Sarah herself was bearing was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise do you know how long it took before Abraham received the promise from God? 25 years! And then you have people who are not even one year in the faith and they are already complaining that God is not blessing them. That I am not seeing my miracle. No, Abraham, the friend of God, waited for 25 years before the child that God had, God had even promised the child. God hasn't promised you anything yet. But it took 25 years and he waited because he trusted the God who promised was going to do it. This is what it means to follow God. This is what it means 
to walk by faith. See, and so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. Yes, some of them died without receiving the blessing that was promised to them. And then they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. Peter asks us to live as aliens on this earth, but we want everything. That's why the devil, through false prophets and false teachers, is promising us blessings and days and that. And that's what you're running. Most people are running after. See, and they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And then, with, by faith, Abraham, when he was asked to sacrifice, Isaac sacrificed. And then we go all the way to Moses. His faith in Egypt we go all the way to Joseph. Let's go down all the way to verse 32 here so that we can round it up. So instead of listing everyone, the prophets and all the people, he said, and what more shall I say? I do not have time. He's like literally, I do not have time right now to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms. Jesus said that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, remove and be thrown into the sea. You can say to America, remove and be thrown into the sea. And it will go at your command by faith. They conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. Who shot the mouths of lions? We know Daniel quenched the fury of flames. We know the three Hebrew boys in Daniel 3. And escaped the age of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, yes, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might gain a better resurrection. This is not your best life now. Your best life is coming in the resurrection. And for most of us listening to this message, I believe strongly that Christ will appear when you are still alive. But if you have not believed, you will not receive the better resurrection. You see, that some faced jails and flogging, while others were chained and put in prison. Listen carefully. This is the fate of those who follow Jesus. You are not an exception. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is that Christianity is no longer biblical Christianity. We don't follow the Jesus of the Bible. That's why we don't face the sufferings. They were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. Not so the modern prophets, right? We ride in private jets. We, we, we drive the best cars. Are we different than this prophet? No, the false prophets on ancient time, they were just as wealthy. Friends of kings. He said, these were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us, so that to, at, only together with us would they be made perfect. He will talk about that in chapter 2, in chapter 12. Okay, so, he said, now that you have heard all these things, this is how the ancients overcame. The apostles overcame by faith in the devil's world. Say, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that is, all these people 
in chapter 11, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Is there a sin that is holding you back? It is time to throw off that sin as we enter this 2024 and embark on this journey to follow Jesus. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We're going to see it in following Jesus, sitting on the throne comes through suffering. Exaltation to the highest place in the kingdom of God comes through suffering. The prophets went through, Jesus went through, and now sits in the right hand of majesty in heaven. Verse 3 of Hebrews 12. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not re yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. You have not fought against sin to the point of dying for Jesus. And if you have not followed Jesus to the point where you are ready to die for him, you are actually not following him. Well, most people follow him for an advantage, for a blessing. Um, not quite the Bible way. Jesus said, you must carry your cross daily and follow him. It will cost you everything, but the gain will be more than anything you have ever imagined. So I want to invite you to tune in again next Monday so that we can continue to really embark on this journey of following Jesus. What does it mean? And how can I better follow Jesus? How can I obey him? How can I know him more? Thank you for tuning in. And I pray that the Spirit of God will visit you this year in a unique way. And that he will manifest in your life so that you will follow Jesus truly from your heart. Thank you for listening.